Hi, everyone. Judge Andrew Napolitano here for Judging Freedom. Today is Thursday, December 28th, 2023. In a moment, Lieutenant Colonel Karen Kwiatkowski, big brain time, joins, uh, and joins us. And the issue of our day for Colonel Kwiatkowski is, why is government so indifferent to evil? But first this. Judge Napolitano here. I love being a spokesperson for causes that I believe in, and one of them is the soundness of money. We don't have that anymore. The markets are casinos. The Fed is printing cash like it's going out of style. What is the government doing to my money? What is it doing to your money? Over 34 trillion in government debt, and that number goes up with every tick of the clock. The cost of living is unsustainable, and the cost of everything from eggs to bread is going through the roof no matter what the white house tells you you can no longer trust the government or wall street or the bank so how do you save now and for the future do what i did do your research when i did my research it led me to gold and silver and that led me to lear capital the leader in gold and silver since 1997 i know the folks at lear i work with the folks at lear i trust the folks at lear how do you reach them 800-511-4620 or learjudgenap.com. You'll have a very nice conversation with a very knowledgeable person. There's no high pressure. They will send you literature that you can share with your spouse, and then you'll decide what to do. You might even qualify for $15,000 in bonus gold. Lear has been the leader in this area of investing for the past 25 years. 800-511-4620. And don't forget to ask about a gold IRA. Find out how diversifying your portfolio from stocks and bonds into gold and silver can give you peace of mind. The peace of mind you deserve. 800-511-4620. LearJudgeNap.com. And when you speak to these good folks, tell them the judge sent you. Karen, welcome here, uh, my dear friend. Thank you for all the time uh, and insight you have given to us in 2023. Thank you for the rejuvenation of our personal friendship and happy collaboration. And I hope we can continue this, continue to do this on a regular basis in 2024. I know that the thousands watching us now feel the same way. It's a pleasure to be able to pick your brain. <laughs> what, why uh, are governments indifferent to what is patently obviously evil <laughs> you know it's a really good a really good question and um I, I think there's a couple of reasons but one of them is you know governments exist on money that is um allotted to them taken from wherever they take it from the people the working people and that money doesn't come with any real strings so it's kind of like it's like kind of like free money to them. And, you know, when we, I mean, when a normal person gets some free money, some extra money with no accountability, you, um, you kind of say, I can enjoy this. And I think they, I think people in government enjoy what they do very much. And I think they enjoy the, the financing that they get with no accountability, no strings attached. And I think they enjoy the power. Um, and of course, uh, love of money and love of power. These are, these are problems. Um, brings out the worst in people. And then there's no, there's no breaks. There's no way to um, uh, say, let's talk to Anthony Blinken and, and see, you know, Hey, you know, you're, what you're doing is morally wrong. What you're advocating for is deadly to innocent people. Pick your country. I mean, it, it you know, this is Gaza and Ukraine aren't the first experiences that Blinken has certainly had in killing people from afar, but we, we can't, we can't uh, reach him. You know, we can't, uh, there's no accountability uh, for a normal person. Uh, you have to trust that they have uh, some guidance some, of faith, that they know the difference between right and wrong. And then what seems to happen is that most of these guys in government do not know the difference between right and wrong. You know, the, the government has so structured itself that when its uh, officials do horrible things, they are essentially immune from the um, consequences other than political consequences. When Barack Obama uh, used drones to kill two Americans, Anwar al-Awlaki and his 16-year-old son, they were both born in the United States, they were, uh, Anwar al the father, had been employed by the Defense Department to educate senior military 
uh, on the is Islamic mentality, a, a choice made by Donald Rumsfeld himself after he heard all along he give a speech. Well, fast forward to the Obama administration decides to kill these people uh, with no uh, no consequences whatsoever uh, to to what he did when he uh, was pressed by many of us in the news media for a legal justification for it. Uh, he got a, uh, a memo from his attorney general, uh, Eric Holder, saying, well, this is the same thing as if the police were shooting at bank robbers who were shooting back at them. It was an absurd uh, legal argument. It would have flunked uh, the first year of uh, criminal procedure in any law school in the country. But the point remains the same. He knew there would be no consequences to him. He knew that he, he could kill with impunity. So maybe presidents kill because they can, mm -hmm. and maybe governments are indifferent to killing because there are times when it's politically popular. You demonize these people, sure. and then he slaughtered them. Sure, and, and there are no consequences. And the ability to control the media coverage um, is, is very, uh, it's very huge. It's very intense, and it's focused on protecting governments uh, everywhere. I don't if it's ours or anybody else's, uh, governments use media to protect themselves from those consequences. Because, you know, when when people do discover uh, really bad things or upsetting things that their governments are doing, if enough people discover that and talk about it, um, usually you do see you do see some attempts to, uh, you know, to change a little bit, to have inject a little accountability in. But uh, with most of what our government does overseas, there is no visibility whatsoever. The average American has no idea uh, what our governments are doing, uh, what, what our politicians are doing. We, we just don't even know. And by the time we find out, what's the accountability there? And it's not just in foreign policy. I mean, um, I hate to bring up the, the uh, COVID vaccines, but you know, one of the big requirements that Pfizer and uh, Moderna and these companies had was we, will, we refuse to be held accountable for any errors, for any mistakes, any uh, bad consequences, uh, before we uh, will sell this, you know, we, we want to sell this, but you must uh, indemnify us. Right. And and so um, there's a huge effort in uh, government to indemnify themselves. But over the uh, Christmas weekend, uh, President Biden uh, attacked uh, people in Iraq. Uh, we are physically located, the United States military is physically located in Iraq against the wishes of the Iraqi government. Mm -hmm. Most people will call that an invasion. Imagine if the Chinese military were in South Dakota, we would consider <laughs> it an invasion. Uh, and from another place, from where, where we are unlawfully present in Syria, he launched missiles to attack people in Iraq claiming that they were financed by Iran. And when asked about it, didn't say anything publicly, but the White House put out this picture of Joe looking tough <laughs> with, with this statement. The president places no higher priority than the protection of American personnel serving in harm's way. In harm's way, what the hell are they doing there? All right, that's me <laughs> uh, editorializing. It's not in the statement. The rest of the statement reads, the United States will act at a time and in a manner of our choosing should these attacks continue. Uh, so the, the troops are illegally there, mm -hmm. but if anything harmful comes to them, we will attack the people that we think financed those who tried to harm the troops. Yeah. So is so there so any moral justification for this killing on Christmas Day. Never no. mind that it was Christmas Day, but that's when it happened. Yeah. No, there, there really isn't. And, you know, the fact that we've got our troops uh, in places occupying certain parts of other people's countries uh, and firing weapons from those locations against them and against their neighbors, which is what we've been doing, you know, that that's very much like what, uh, I mean, that's almost like what Russia, you know, Russia is, is in Ukraine doing something like that. We, we think that's awful, but it's okay when we do it. Um, very, very hypocritical. And I, I think that they have to spend a lot of time really trying to downplay what we're doing because the average person can figure this out. Average American is not stupid. And then they see these things, they go, wait a minute, wait a minute. They're, we're doing what we're complaining the other countries are doing. 
So um, I don't know. I, I think they, they control the media. I mean, I was looking prior to this for uh, some current numbers on the Gaza dead and uh, the latest numbers that I can find in American media are from before Christmas. And um, uh, there's just a, a shutout of, of Gaza news on, on any of the American uh, media websites. They're, they're not even talking about it. So um, that's the new strategy, I guess, to act like it's not happening. Well, here's um, here's a clip produced by our friend and colleague, uh, Max Blumenthal. Uh, it's difficult to watch. Uh, it's about uh, slaughter on Christmas Eve by the uh, IDF. Um, uh, we have blurred out the faces of uh, those who are dead, so it is watchable, and it will pass the censors of the places where uh, Freedom Watch uh, is uh, is hosted. Uh, but this is what American military uh, equipment and ammunition is doing. I'd like your thoughts on it. it. takes about two minutes to watch. While much of the world celebrated the holiday of Christmas, the Israeli military was carrying out yet another massacre in the Gaza Strip. This time in the Magazi refugee camp in the center of the besieged enclave killing at least 70 civilians with missiles supplied by the United States. The Gray Zone obtained this exclusive footage filmed at the site of the Christmas Eve massacre. These are the bodies of those killed by Israel while so many celebrated with family and friends across the world. Others collected whatever belongings they could from the ruins of their homes in the refugee camp. Above their heads was an Israeli Hermes drone, emitting the ominous lawnmower-like hum that has become a perpetual presence in the Gaza Strip. Are Joe Biden and Antony Blinken and Lloyd Austin and Jake Sullivan, you go right down the line, morally culpable for the war crimes, the results of which we just saw? Absolutely. 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 They're accountable for it. And the, the Pentagon and the State Department as well in uh, providing, working hard for years uh, and in response most recently to provide these uh, uh, bunker buster bombs and all kinds of ammunition, uh, producing it rapidly, shipping it to Israel to be used on Gaza. You know, we're doing that very knowingly that the results are going to be this and that the results are, uh, you know, it's a clearing of people. It is a genocide of people. They want all of the Palestinians off of Gaza, completely off of Gaza, and they want Gaza uninhabitable. Uh, so that there is no way, no way for these people to return, and there's no homes left. There's no structures that are standing, um, and we are doing that. We are not just supporting it. It's American bombs. Americans who work in factories who create these bombs are doing that. So, in actual fact, many of us in America are accountable for this. We are a part of this crime and this criminal response. So. You know, and I think people are starting to to recognize that, um, you know, maybe feel a sense of discomfort. But I don't think our politicians feel any discomfort. No, no, they don't. Which is why I keep asking about indifference, indifference, indifference to suffering. Uh, Israeli Admiral Daniel Hagari, who's uh, one of the several official military spokespersons, told the Guardian. This is before the uh, clip uh, that Max Blumenthal uh, obtained and narrated so this is a few um 
days before Christmas Eve, uh, hundreds of tons of bombs have been dropped on Gaza. Mm -hmm. And quote, our emphasis is not on, excuse me, our emphasis is on, emphasis is on damage, not on accuracy. Mm -hmm. Now that to me, by definition, would be a war crime. Yeah. Hundreds of tons of bombs dropped on a civilian population where the emphasis is damage, not accuracy. He yeah. might as well, instead of saying death, he might as well have, instead of saying damage, he might as well have said death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, clearly, uh, I think we have a lot of evidence from the statements of uh, both the leadership in Israel, but also some of our own um, leaders in, in, in the United States have said things and admitted things and supported things verbally that actually qualify them in, in a war crimes court. So what Erdogan is talking about, you know, bringing Netanyahu before a international uh, criminal court, uh, I think there's a great many, uh, I, I think that's legitimate. I think that that, I think we're going to see more of that. But again, what we do after the fact does not seem to help stop what's happening right now in Gaza. And it's a, it is a, a state slaughter for state purposes. I mean, that's, that's all you can, so yeah, that's Chris, how you can define it. Chris, let's play a uh, sot number one on the new list. <clears throat> President Erdogan saying, quote, this is President Erdogan. Netanyahu is no different from Hitler. You'll hear him and you'll hear the translation. And right in front of our eyes for 80 days, all virtues relating to humanity have been uh, shot at. At stadiums, we saw the Nazi camps of Israelis. How does this happen? They used to talk about Hitler, but how are you any different than Hitler? This is even worse than Hitler. What Netanyahu is doing is no less than what Hitler did. So, Hitler was not as rich as he was. He is richer than Hitler. He takes support from the West. He receives every kind of support from the US. And with all that support, more than 20,000 Gazans were killed. The voice that is standing with the innocent and the oppressed is the voice of the Muslim Turk. Even during war, hospitals or schools or houses of worship or universities should not be touched, but they were bombed. Gazan scientists were martyred together with their families. The barbarism in Gaza was covered by journalists, but close to 100 journalists were massacred. 100 journalists were massacred. He has, according to uh, Colonel McGregor and Scott uh, Ritter, mm -hmm. the largest and the best uh, military in that part of the world. Is he going to do anything or is he just going to stand up there and call Netanyahu uh, uh, Hitler? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think uh, part of the complaint that Turkey has and the public complaint is that uh, is, is politically driven domestically. I mean, the whole world is outraged. And uh, I think uh, Erdogan is providing you know voice to that. Um, whether he's going to go to war, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to hard to say. And, and of course, Israel is a, a nuclear power. And they're unpredictable. Uh, they, uh, I, I think what's happening, though, and we're seeing it already around the world, there's a distaste for both America globally, which that's been developing for some time. But there's also a great distaste for Israel globally. And we're seeing already people, common people and, all, and whole countries that see how they're behaving. And, of course, with American support, uh, that's making it possible. There's no doubt they couldn't do this without without the weapons that we are flowing into them uh, free, for free. I mean, we're, the taxpayers buying them and giving them to Netanyahu to destroy Gaza. We're, we've been doing that and we're still doing that. So I think uh, the world is looking at this and drawing a conclusion that they don't want to be a part of it. 
Uh, I don't think people are going to want to trade with Israel. I think this is already impacting Israel's economy. And I think there's going to be long-term uh, impact uh, of global distaste for Israel, condemnation, of course. And I think it's going to continue long past this. Um, certainly, if he is able to uh, solicit uh, countries to take 2.3 million Gazans, because that's what he's trying to do now. That is what they're saying. Which countries will take these people? Because he does. He wants them gone. The Israeli government wants these people disappeared from Gaza. Um, you know, he, he wants the the country unoccupiable until, at a time of Israel's choosing, they rebuild it for Israelis and and basically settle Gaza. Um, and I don't know. We talked one time about the uh, the little song the friendship song. And I think you uh, had, had listened to that or seen it uh, that the Israeli school children sang. And it talks about uh, taking Gaza for the Jewish people as part of their, um, I guess, granted homeland of some sort. And uh, so their intent is, is totally upfront and out there. You can't be, and that's, that's kind of what's frustrating about this because everything that Israel is doing and what we're doing we don't seem to be ashamed. The United States doesn't seem to be ashamed of it. Well, uh, let me ask you how your former colleagues react. Career military people of your rank, <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel and above, are they uh, repulsed by what the IDF is doing and what we're uh, facilitating, or are they indifferent to it? You know, it's hard, it's hard for me to say if they are. I, I actually... Um, I actually think that they're indifferent to it. I think most um, people in the military are indifferent to this. Um, I think uh, most people that work for government are indifferent to it. And if you notice um, for 20 years how the United States has been treating military, particularly military whistleblowers, um, you know, Ed Snowden, for example. Um, you know, Ed Snowden is in Russia because he will be thrown into in a hole for his life if he comes back to America and, and, he, and he needs Russian protection so that we don't send people over there to get him. So there is no tolerance. Our government does not tolerate dissent amongst the people that work in government. Um, and I think that message is probably one of the clearest ones that has gotten through. Um, you know, with, with, with Vietnam, we had a, we didn't have a volunteer force. We had people that went there against their will and because they had been forced to go there, against their will. I think they didn't buy in to all of the uh, uh, propaganda that the military puts on them. But we've had since then uh, years, decades of a volunteer force. And the message that they give to the volunteer force is, you chose this, so shut up if you don't like it. This was what you chose. You agreed to submit your own personal morality, if, if need be, to the interest of the state. And uh, so I, I really think that many of them are indifferent. Uh, I don't, I haven't seen, I haven't heard of any military people uh, quitting as a result of this, although we did see the State Department uh, have some folks that, that uh, I don't know if they quit or just sent a letter. There's been, you know, the pushback is uh, mild, even, you know, I guess people's hands are tied, but they shouldn't be. Difficult to uh, discuss all this, Karen, but uh, thank you very much for your thoughtfulness, for your uh, courage, and for your uh, analysis. I don't know how this is going to end. I'm sure it's going to be going on next week. We hope you'll come back and continue to join us uh, every week, whether it's <laughs> Ukraine or uh, Israel or the Pentagon or big picture. Uh, your knowledge is uh, is is. Uh, storehouse of wealth <laughs> for me, uh, for my team, uh, and for those wonderful people that watch us. Uh, well, thank you for your kind words. Um, I'll definitely be back. <laughs> thank you, Karen. All the best and Happy New Year to you. Okay. Happy New Year to you too, Judge. Coming up uh, tomorrow at three in the afternoon, the uh, Intelligence Roundtable, should the CIA be dismantled? And at four o'clock tomorrow, Eastern, ask the judge. And at five o'clock tomorrow, the inimitable and courageous Max Blumenthal. Judge Napolitano for judging freedom.